Welcome to Decades of History. Today we are covering the 10 worst cars from the 1980s. Number 10, 1989 Chrysler TC by Maserati. The Chrysler TC, a venture aimed at blending Italian design with American engineering, did not meet the anticipated performance levels. Its 2.2-liter turbocharged engine, while somewhat powerful, fell short of providing the exhilarating driving experience expected from a vehicle bearing the Maserati name. And the alternative V6 option also failed to live up to the expectations of a luxury sports car. The TC's design, too similar to the less expensive Chrysler LeBaron, along with an interior that did not reflect the luxury expected from such a notable collaboration, diluted its appeal. The vehicle was further hampered by reliability issues, including frequent troubles with its turbocharged engine, transmission, and electrical system, exacerbated by the complexity of integrating Chrysler and Maserati components. Safety features on the TC were on par with industry standards of the time, but did not stand out against competitors. Despite the absence of major recalls, the car's reliability and construction quality issues tarnished its reputation. Ultimately, the Chrysler TC is often cited as a misguided effort to forge a luxury sports car, with its high price and underwhelming performance resulting in commercial disappointment leading to its discontinuation after a few years with only about 7,300 units produced and marking a misstep in the collaboration between Chrysler and Maserati. I think there's something wrong with this car. <laughs> the car's going backwards, but it's... Stainless Steel DeLorean. Number 9. The DeLorean. The DeLorean DMC-12's iconic appearance belied its underwhelming performance, equipped with a mediocre 130-horsepower PRV V6 engine that fell short of the high expectations set by its futuristic design, resulting in sluggish acceleration. The car's stainless steel body and distinctive gullwing doors, though visually impressive, presented practical drawbacks such as maintenance difficulties, a lack of customization options, and cumbersome operation in tight spaces, which also adversely affected its handling due to the added weight. Reliability issues, including frequent electrical problems and coolant leaks, were exacerbated by the vehicle's brief production span, leading to a scarcity of replacement parts and expensive repairs. Despite featuring advanced safety features like a safety cage and crumple zones, the practicality of its gullwing doors during emergencies remained debatable, with a significant recall over its front suspension system underscoring concerns about potential control loss. Nonetheless, the DeLorean DMC-12 transcended its commercial failures to become a cult classic immortalized by its role in Back to the Future, where cinematic magic transformed this flop into an enduring icon. Financial woes and legal troubles couldn't diminish the DeLorean's appeal, with a resurgence of interest among enthusiasts dedicated to preserving its legacy through parts supply and contemporary reinterpretations. This enduring fascination confirms that, despite its imperfections, many still dream of owning a DeLorean, if only to echo the sentiment, where we're going, we don't need roads. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. The jet set and the wet set, the trail set and the sail set. Number 8, 1986, Ford Bronco 2. The 1986 Ford Bronco 2, launched as a compact sibling to the full-size Bronco, faced performance shortcomings due to its underpowered engines particularly the standard 2.8-liter V6, which failed to provide adequate power, leading to a lackluster driving experience. Its high center of gravity and narrow wheelbase design contributed to instability and an increased risk of rollovers during abrupt turns or maneuvers, raising significant safety concerns. The Bronco 2 also suffered from reliability issues, such as transmission failures and electrical problems, compromising its dependability. The vehicle's propensity for rollovers critically undermined its safety profile, severely tarnishing its reputation. Despite recalls addressing various safety and mechanical issues, the Bronco 2's notoriety for stability and rollover risks persisted. The model became infamous for its tendency to roll over, sparking numerous lawsuits and creating a long-lasting negative perception. In response to growing safety concerns and legal challenges, Ford released the Explorer in 1990, with design changes aimed at improving stability signaling a departure from the troubled legacy of the Bronco 2 and reflecting a broader commitment to enhanced safety and stability in its SUV lineup. You've been robbed. Your back seat is gone. It's not gone because it was never there in the first place. Please to look at it. Some people like it for all the luxury they get. Standard. Number 7. 1982 Cadillac Cimarron. 
The 1982 Cadillac Cimarron was widely criticized for its disappointing performance, stemming from an underpowered four-cylinder engine that did not match the expectations for a luxury brand, leaving the car feeling sluggish beside its more opulent rivals. As a rebadged Chevrolet Cavalier, the Cimarron fell short of delivering the luxury and sophistication anticipated from Cadillac, with its compact dimensions and economy car origins detracting significantly from the premium experience. Although average in reliability, it failed to live up to the durability standards expected of luxury vehicles, sharing too many parts with lower-priced GM models, which led to owner dissatisfaction. Safety evaluations were less rigorous than today's standards, and being based on a compact car, the Cimarron lacked the advanced safety features typically associated with luxury cars. While not suffering from major recalls, its reputation suffered from its association with GM's wider quality and reliability issues of the time, symbolizing GM's strategic errors in the 1980s and becoming a classic case of badge engineering gone wrong. Despite Cadillac's attempts to improve the Cimarron with stronger engines and updates, these measures could not salvage its image, resulting in its discontinuation in 1988 and serving as a lesson for Cadillac to ensure future models truly reflected luxury and performance. The overwhelmingly negative market reception, exacerbated by a high price point for what was perceived as a dressed-up economy car, further damaged Cadillac's image, prompting a shift towards genuine luxury in subsequent models. Chevy Citation is compact enough to fit into three quarters. Number 6. 1980 Chevrolet Citation The 1980 Chevrolet Citation initially dazzled the market, clinching Motor Trend's car of the year, but its glory was short-lived due to various drawbacks. Performance-wise, it stumbled with a four-cylinder engine that lagged in power and handling and braking that left much to be desired, failing to live up to the hype. Despite its innovative hatchback design offering more space, it suffered from a cramped engine bay complicating maintenance, and the front-wheel drive system, though a step forward, was poorly executed. The reliability of the Citation quickly became a concern, with frequent issues like premature component wear, electrical glitches, and engine failures leading to a reputation for unreliability. Safety was another area where the Citation fell short. By modern standards, its safety features would be deemed inadequate further tainted by reports of brake failures and handling problems. The model faced numerous recalls, significantly denting its image and undermining consumer confidence. Despite a strong start in sales, the realization of its numerous problems led to a steep decline in both sales and resale value. General Motors attempted to rectify some issues through recalls and updates, but the Citation's legacy was marred, leading to its discontinuation in 1985 with GM taking the hard lessons learned into its future endeavors. Word announces the first Pontiac ever to offer you the pull of front-wheel drive. <laughs> Number 5. 1980 Pontiac Phoenix The 1980 Pontiac Phoenix was plagued by performance deficiencies, stemming from its use of the same underpowered engines as the Chevrolet Citation within the GM X-Body platform, resulting in slow acceleration and disappointing handling that clashed with Pontiac's sporty image. Its design failed to stand out, closely mirroring that of its X-Body siblings, Chevrolet Citation, Oldsmobile Omega, and Buick Skylark, diluting its identity within GM's lineup and the auto market at large. The vehicle's interior was widely criticized for the poor quality of materials and uninspired design, further diminishing its allure. Reliability issues were rampant in the Phoenix, with owners frequently reporting drivetrain, electrical, and braking problems, significantly tarnishing the model's reputation and contributing to the negative perception of the X-Body platform. Safety concerns were amplified by shared braking problems across the X-Body models, leading to apprehensions about the vehicle's safety. The Phoenix, along with its X-Body counterparts, was subject to major recalls, particularly regarding its braking system, which severely eroded consumer trust and confidence. Despite not being notorious for a singular debacle, the Phoenix's association with the troubled X-Body platform and its mechanical woes, coupled with tepid initial interest and the fallout from recalls, led to poor sales and the eventual discontinuation of the model as GM moved on to focus on newer, more viable vehicle platforms. Mid-engine production car. Fiero, a brilliant... Number 4. 1984 Pontiac Fiero. The 1984 Fiero, Pontiac's pioneering mid-engine sports car, debuted amidst great anticipation but quickly encountered critical issues. Its sole engine, the Iron Duke four-cylinder offered a disappointing output of less than 100 horsepower, and the absence of power steering alongside problematic brakes detracted from the driving experience. 
The car's aesthetic promised a level of speed and agility that its actual performance failed to meet, resulting in widespread disillusionment. Initially, despite its drawbacks like engine fires, inefficient fuel consumption, and the use of heavy parts affecting its dynamics, the Fiero enjoyed strong sales. Pontiac's ambitious foray into mid-engine sports car territory with the Fiero, despite its early mechanical and handling flaws, saw commendable improvements throughout its five-year lifespan. The introduction of a V6 engine in 1985, the launch of a Fastback GT model in 1986, and significant upgrades to the suspension and brakes by 1988 elevated the Fiero to a more respectable status among sports cars, even surpassing the Ferrari 308 in some respects. Its legacy as a pioneering mid-engine American sports car remains significant, marking a notable chapter in automotive history for its ambitious design and eventual redemption. However, the 1984 Fiero lands as one of the worst cars from the 1980s. Number 3. 1982 Lancia Beta The 1982 Lancia Beta was initially acclaimed for its impressive driving dynamics and engine performance, but its reputation suffered as build quality and maintenance issues emerged over time. Despite its praised design and handling, the Beta series became infamous for severe rust problems, a consequence of using substandard steel and inadequate rust proofing during production, which led to extensive corrosion compromising the vehicle's structural integrity. In addition to rust, the Lancia Beta was plagued by reliability issues, including frequent electrical system failures and mechanical breakdowns that tarnished its reliability. Safety concerns became more pronounced due to the rust, which posed significant safety risks by affecting the car's structural integrity and accidents. Lancia's response to the rust issue in the UK, where it offered to buy back corroded vehicles, acted as an informal recall and highlighted the seriousness of the problem, damaging Lancia's reputation significantly. The widespread rust issues not only necessitated an unprecedented buyback program in the UK, but also resulted in a sharp decline in sales and lasting damage to Lancia's image, especially outside Italy. Despite attempts to address the rust proofing in later models, the damage to Lancia's reputation was profound and lasting particularly in the UK market, from which the brand struggled to recover. Back and pinion steering and front wheel drive for great handling and four wheel independent suspension to keep things. Number two, 1980 Renault Le Car. 1980 Renault Le Car, known globally as the Renault 5, encountered criticism in the US market primarily due to its underwhelming performance with engines that were adequate for city driving but lacked the necessary power and acceleration for highway use, positioning it unfavorably against competitors. In Europe, its compact size and fuel efficiency garnered appreciation. But in the US, its diminutive stature and simplistic design failed to attract consumers who generally favored larger vehicles, with its ride comfort and handling further detracting from its appeal. The Le Car was beset with reliability issues, as owners frequently reported problems ranging from electrical system malfunctions to transmission and engine failures, highlighting its poor construction quality for American consumers. Safety features in the Lacar were minimal, falling short of the advanced technologies and construction techniques that would later become standard, making it more susceptible to damage and accidents. Its reputation was further marred by recalls that underscored significant safety and reliability issues, cementing its status as a problematic vehicle. While the Renault 5 found success in Europe for its practicality, the Lacar's appeal in the US was limited, overshadowed by more reliable and better equipped models from Japanese automakers despite becoming a niche favorite among some for its distinct design and European charm. Attempts by Renault to enhance the Le Car with stronger engines and special additions were insufficient to improve its standing, leading to its discontinuation in the US as Renault reduced its North American operations in the late 1980s. Number 1. 1986 Yugo GV the 1986 Yugo GV is infamously known as one of the least impressive cars, largely due to its dismal performance, characterized by a sluggish acceleration from 0 to 60 miles per hour in over 15 seconds. Attributed to its weak 1.1-liter engine producing merely 55 horsepower, rendering highway driving and passing challenging. Its design considered outdated, even at its introduction, was derived from the Fiat 127, showcasing a basic look with notable poor build quality, such as misaligned panels, and uneven paint, complemented by a bare interior with low-quality materials. The Yugo GV's reliability was severely compromised by frequent electrical and mechanical failures, quick wear of parts, and a susceptibility to rust. Safety concerns were paramount, lacking in essential features like effective crumple zones and dependable seat belts, 
with crash tests underscoring its perilous nature. The vehicle's reputation suffered further from multiple recalls for issues including rear seatbelt defects and electrical problems that could lead to fires, exacerbating its poor image in the U.S. market. Although its low initial cost made the Yugo GV America's most affordable vehicle at one time, its significant shortcomings in performance, reliability, and safety rapidly eroded consumer interest, marking it as a poor investment. Efforts by Yugo America to rehabilitate the brand with upgraded models and better warranties could not overcome the entrenched negative perceptions, with increasing safety and emissions regulations eventually leading to the brand's withdrawal from the U.S. market in the early 1990s. Which of these cars do you think is the absolute worst? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. From all of us here, thank you for watching.